Hello everyone, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel for another video. Today we're having a video on the Camp Trailer die from Honey Bee Stamps. Uh, if you saw my video the other day, I did a haul and I got some of these products. So we're going to be using the, these papers. That is the Harvest Festival 6x6. And I went ahead and cut everything out already because honestly that would just... Yeah, that'd be boring to watch me cut out everything, but um, it's cool. I love this die set, and I'm going to make a couple different cards for you today. I did cut out two from Craft because we're going to go ahead and make our card the shape of the trailer. And so I've cut out a white one because that's going to be what my trailer base color will be. And let's get a, go ahead and get started putting everything together. So I am using some of this Tombow Mono Multi, which is a pretty good glue. Now, it is one of those glues that if it dries outside of things, it will be tacky. But if you, you know, adhere your things down uh, right away, it will be permanent. So that is nice about this glue, but it is one of those that you can do it two different ways. So that's like why they call it Mono Multi, or Mono Multi. So it has multiple uses. Uh, this cardstock was just some cardstock I had in my stash, but all the other is patterned paper from that Harvest Festival, which I'm just in love with. I did use this Zig pen for my glue for these little pieces, because, and I could have used the Mono Multi, but if that comes out the side, then it will be a little bit tacky, and I didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> um, and I'm using what I have. I have so many different kinds of glue. I'm just using what I have because I'm just about out of my favorite glue and it's not in stock right now. So we're using what we have, which is always a good thing to do. I'm gonna glue down the little white piece and then we'll glue down our tire to the front. And it's, I just love how all these pieces just fit together so nicely. There really isn't a lot of guesswork and you could put pieces in different areas if you wanted to, I suppose. Like you wouldn't have to put the door exactly where I'm putting it. You could move it over and maybe put two windows if you wanted or whatever you want to do. Um, and I am adhering the little piece of the door behind the door because I wanted the door to be very prominent, but you could put it on top of the door if you wanted. So that's really pretty neat. Um, and then I'm going to put the glass piece inside. So I, I chose a like a light blue for the glass. I'll just put that in there and that one came from my stash somewhere. I'll use the little glue pen again to put the handle for the door and I'm using my crystal katana to get it in there. And that's just from some black cardstock. And now I'm gonna start adhering pieces for the window. I cut out some shades and then I'm adhering those down but I'm actually, because I want them to really show, I'm putting them over just a little bit. So there is a little bit of a border on the right and the left hand side. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'll put the frame of the window right on top of that and it will cover just a little bit of that. So I really wanted the curtains to show, but you could push it all the way to the side and it's not gonna make a difference. You wouldn't even have to put the frame on there if you wouldn't want to, you could just put the window on there, I suppose. You know, play around with it. If it's a die that you have or if it's a die you're thinking about getting, just play around with it, have fun with it. But I'm gonna put that right there and there is a little shade that goes with it. And so um, I went ahead and cut that out of some black cardstock. It does put the score lines in. So I'm just scoring that a little bit. And I just think that adds so much to it. You wouldn't have to put that on there either. Uh, you could embellish this with some flowers or whatever you wanna do. That's the fun of these little die cuts. You could just go crazy with it and I love it. So I'm gonna stick that sort of right behind my window. And the cool thing about it is, it will lay flat, but then the recipient, it'll pop up for the recipient, which is really, really just cute. I did get some glue on the outside of that, so I'm just using a little glue eraser. I've had that thing for probably a hundred years, <laughs> and uh, it lasts forever, but now I'm going to start putting my card together. So it, this also comes with this little strip. It's like a little rectangle, rectangular piece that you score right in the middle, or it scores in the middle, and you just fold it in half, and that's gonna be your hinge for your card. So I'm using a strong adhesive, and then I'll just adhere that down to the front, and then our card will be just about ready. I'm gonna stamp a sentiment on the inside. I decided not to put a sentiment on the outside. You could very easily do that, but I just decided to leave it as is. And that's cool because this will fit into an A2 size envelope. Here's the stamp set I'm using. That was the Wild and Free stamp set. I'm gonna stamp my sentiment on the inside using some Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And I just think that's adorable. So there's our first card. You make me a happy camper. 
And then I went ahead and made a slimline card as well. This is this is what we're making here. I went ahead and put all the pieces together since you already saw me do that once. You didn't need to see me do it again. And those patterns come from the Great Outdoors pattern paper that is from Honeybee. I cut my uh, slimline down to about, was it seven and a half inches by eight and a half inches? And then I scored it at three, three and three quarters is what I did. So it's... And, and check your envelopes because you can adjust your slim line to be however, as long as it fits in your envelope, you know, there are different sizes. And I'm going to show you how you can have a seam in the middle with something this big and it really won't make a difference. So I definitely wanted to use those patterns because originally I thought, well, I'll make this an A2 size card. And then I got to thinking, no, I want to make this a slim line. I think this would be really cool on a slim line. And I'm not concerned that that silver piece or gray piece is a little bit taller than the other one because I am going to cover it. So I put this, the gray pieces down first and now I'm going to put my sky up there. And the reason I'm doing it in this order is because the grass will overlap both of those. And then uh, we'll put down our next piece of the sky and these overlap just enough that it almost looks like they are a continuous pattern. I mean, other than seeing the line there, it's not really that big of a deal because the motorhome or the uh, RV will cover most of that. So now we'll put our grass down, I'm just deciding which piece I want to put down. You could add even more texture to these by doing some ink blending on the edges, but I figured this was fun. We'll leave it as is and I'll put my glue down on my card front and then we'll attach our grass to that. I went a little high on the one side and it's pretty obvious that there's a seam there with the grass, but again, that's going to get covered. I do have extra, so I am going to pull in my guillotine trimmer and we're gonna trim off all of that excess, but we'll save those excess pieces because we're gonna use those on the inside of our card. We'll cut those in half and use those on the inside. But then again, there, are, there again is the stamp set we're using and I'm going to use the matching die. I grabbed one of the patterns from that Great Outdoors pattern paper and two of the sentiments I wanted to use and I put this inside my Misty. I'm gonna use my magic powder bag over this. I'll ink up both of those sentiments with some Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. I'll stamp that down and then we'll cover that with our Brutus Monroe Alabaster embossing powder. And then I'll heat set that till those are smooth and melted. I wasn't sure how this would work on that pattern paper, but they end up working really well and you can read them just fine. And when those are done, we're going to grab the matching dies, which I think is so cool. And we will cut those out. I typically don't always buy matching dies. Y'all know this, but I just had to. I love that they cut out the words. So we'll decorate the inside. So these are the extra pieces. Uh, this gray one ends up being a little bit long, so I'll have to move it over because I want everything to line up and um, as you see here it's just too long so I'll pull that up thankfully it wasn't dry yet and I'll just move it over a hair and then I will do the same thing with my grass just glue that down and there ends up being a little bit of extra with that as well and then we'll move over to the other side I'll let that dry and then I'll trim off the excess here in a minute but let's do the other side I just have been enjoying putting the pattern papers on the left and right hand side these lately. It um, just kind of frames up everything and it has this cohesion from the outside to the inside which I really like. And then like I said we'll trim off our excess and then we will put down our sentiment on the inside. Now I use, the, the grass I used was the Heffy Doodle Grassy Last Border Dies, but Trinity Stamps actually has a die and it's their Borders die. Uh, it's a slimline one, so you wouldn't have to do this, but if you don't have a slimline or it's not in your budget to get one, slimline border dies, you know, you can use yours that you have if you have something that'll cover up those seams like I will have here. So you see the seam there, but now it basically becomes invisible because I'm gonna put the camper right over the top of that. And once that is on there, then I will adhere my sentiment to it as well. I thought about popping things up, but I decided not to. Just leaving everything flush to the card. And then for a final bit of embellishment, we're going to grab some Simon Says Stamp Moonshine Confetti. Uh, clear sequins, basically, but without the hole. So if you have those in your stash, grab something like that. 
and then I did make an envelope to match. I used my Trinity Stamp Slimline Envelope Die, and I used some Tonic Green Leaves Specialty Card to make my envelope. I just love that I have a matching envelope, or it's fairly close anyway. And isn't that beautiful? All you'd have to do to write on the outside of your envelope is either use a Sharpie or maybe one of those envelope stickers, you know, the address labels that you could use. But look at how nicely that fits right in there. Love it. And then I will show you the first card I made, and then I'm even gonna show you a bonus card. So there's the first card I made. The bonus card is so vintage looking. It actually uses some tonic cinnamon silk card, specialty card, and yellow bamboo specialty paper. Isn't that so cool? But there they are. I just love this die. I think it's fabulous. Um, and I will have everything that I use linked down below. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye, everybody.